Chapter 16. Information Cascades. 16.1 Following the crowd. When people are connected by a network, it becomes possible for them to influence each other's behavior and decisions. In the next several chapters, we will explore how this basic principle gives rise to a range of social processes in which networks serve to aggregate individual behavior and thus produce population-wide collective outcomes. There is a nearly limitless set of situations in which people are influenced by others. In the opinions they hold, the products they buy, the political positions they support, the activities they pursue, the technologies they use, and many other things, what we'd like to do here is to go beyond this observation and consider some of the reasons why such influence occurs. We'll see that there are many settings in which it may in fact be rational for an individual to imitate the choices of others even if the individual's own information suggests an alternative choice. As a first example, suppose that you are choosing a restaurant in an unfamiliar town. And based on your own research about restaurants you intend to go to restaurant, however, when you arrive you see that no one is eating in restaurant a while restaurant B next door is nearly full. If you believe that other diners have tastes similar to yours, and that they'd have some information about where to eat, it may be rational to join the crowd it'd be rather than to follow your own information. To see how this is possible, suppose that each diner has obtained independent but imperfect information about which of the two restaurants is better. Then if there are already many diners in restaurant B, the information that you can infer from their choices may be more powerful than your own private information in which case it would in fact make sense for you to join them regardless of your own private information. In this case, we say that herding, or an information cascade, has occurred. This terminology, as well as this example, comes from the work of Banerjee. The concept was also developed in other work around the same time by Bikchandani, Hirschleifer, and Welch. Roughly, then, an information cascade has the potential to occur when people make decisions sequentially with later people watching the actions of earlier people, and from these actions inferring something about what the earlier people know. In our restaurant example, when the first diners to arrive chose restaurant B, they conveyed information to later diners about what they knew. A cascade then develops when people abandon their own information in favor of inferences based on earlier people's actions. What is interesting here is that individuals in a cascade are imitating the behavior of others. But it is not mindless imitation. Rather, it is the result of drawing rational inferences from limited information. Of course, imitation may also occur due to social pressure to conform, without any underlying informational cause. And it is not always easy to tell these two phenomena apart. Consider, for example, the following experiment performed by Milgram, Bickman, and Berkowitz in the 1960s. The experimenters had groups of people ranging in size from just one person to as many as 15 people stand on a street corner and stare up into the sky. They then observed how many passers be stopped, and also looked up at the sky. They found that with only one person looking up, very few passers be stopped. If five people were staring up into the sky, then more passers be stopped, but most still ignored them. Finally, with 15 people looking up, they found that 45% of passers be stopped and also stared up into the sky. The experimenters interpreted this result as demonstrating a social force for conformity that grows stronger as the group conforming to the activity becomes larger. But another possible explanation and essentially, a possible mechanism giving rise to the conformity observed in this kind of situation and is rooted in the idea of information cascades. It could be that initially the passersby saw no reason to look up. But with more and more people looking up, future passersby may have rationally decided that there was good reason to also look up. Ultimately, information cascades may be at least part of the explanation for many types of imitation in social settings fashions and fads, voting for popular candidates, the self-reinforcing success of books placed highly on bestseller lists, the spread of a technological choice by consumers and by firms, and the localized nature of crime and political movements can all be seen as examples of herding, in which people make decisions based on inferences from what earlier people have done. Informational effects versus direct benefit effects. There is also a fundamentally different class of rational reasons why you might want to imitate what other people are doing. You may want to copy the behavior of others if there is a direct benefit to you from aligning your behavior with their behavior. For example, consider the first fax machines to be sold. A fax machine is useless if no one else owns one, and so in evaluating whether to buy one. It's very important to know whether there are other people who own one as well and not just because their purchase decisions convey information, but because it directly affect the fax machine's value to you as a product. A similar argument can be made for computer operating systems. 
social networking sites, and other kinds of technology where you directly benefit from choosing an option that has a large user population. This type of direct benefit effect is different from the informational effects we discussed previously. Here, the actions of others are affecting your payoffs directly, rather than indirectly by changing your information. Many decisions exhibit both information and direct benefit effects and, for example, in the technology adoption decisions just discussed, you potentially learn from others' decisions in addition to benefiting from compatibility with them. In some cases, the two effects are even in conflict. If you have to wait in a long line to get into a popular restaurant, you are choosing to let the informational benefits of imitating others outweigh the direct inconvenience that this imitation causes you. In this chapter, we develop some simple models of information cascades. In the next chapter, we do this for direct benefit effects. One reason to develop minimal, stylized models for these effects is to see whether the stories we've been telling can have a simple basis in, and we will see that much of what we've been discussing at an informal level can indeed be represented in very basic models of decision-making by individuals.